Hey, what up crawlers? Okay, listen. I've been asked to make beginner videos for Paladins. Why? Because a lot of members of my community have been interested in joining in for Paladins and Dauntless, and this channel is probably going to focus around these two games right now, because we've recently gotten back into Paladins, and it just feels like it is the right fit for our channel. So, most of you have seen me play, and you know that I'm always topping stats, even on the matches that we lose. So, just to give you an example of that, and to show you that I'm trustworthy, um, these are usually my stats. I will always normally outperform the team no shade to my teammates my teammates are all new so you see stats like this the 7 2k 33 kills 18 deaths uh 29 assists damage 172k you you kind of see stats like this when i'm rocking even this leon game here 22 kills 11 deaths 104k damage you often see me top this team um top the team's statistics and that's because i was the kind of player that played this game obsessively back in my mixer days so coming back now to Paladins on Twitch um, and YouTube, I think that it might be good for me to introduce you guys as beginners to what kind of champions you should start playing for each active role. All right, and I'm gonna go through that right now. So in the following nine minutes, I'm gonna introduce each of the roles to you, what their importance is and how you should start out. Okay, let's go with the first and most important role, the tank. For the tank, Fernando is your primary choice. This guy, all right? Why is Fernando the best choice? Fernando comes with some very important talents and skills. Aegis is going to be your friend as a newbie, all right? Why? Your shield will can be activated as and when you need. It protects your team and it regenerates over time instead of having a cooldown. This is very important because you need to activate your shield, take down your shield. He's very much like Reinhardt in that he has only a melee range of uh, damage. Well, he can throw a fireball too. He's basically Reinhardt but with a flamethrower, okay? So he is very interesting in that regard and plays pretty much exactly like Reinhardt, but he cannot pin anybody, so remember that. And his ultimate doesn't knock everyone down. His ultimate basically will stop anyone from falling below 1,500 health. However, he can still be insta-killed by certain abilities. You learn that later on. All right, Aegis and he, with Fernando, I recommend this kind of build. Now, here's the thing with Paladins. Right off the bat, you can take builds straight away, so you don't need to worry about that. I'm gonna disable my cam for this. Heat Transfer, three. Towering Barrier, four. Last Stand, two. Cavalier, four. Safe Travel, two. Why? Okay, what this allows you to do is that every 1,000 damage taken by your shield will reduce the cooldown of charge. Charge is good for repositioning yourself. As you're trying to hold the point to get the payload, you might need to reposition yourself a lot. Heat transfer helps with that. Towering barrier increases the rate at which your shield gains using Aegis. This is very important because it helps you use your shield very aggressively and regenerate. Last stand is a bit of an iffy card. Some people don't like it, that's okay. I find that in a case where I'm below 40% health, this helps me heal up just a little bit, all right? Um, safe travel will give you a 300 health shield for three seconds after you use charge. You can use this aggressively or defensively. This helps your charge be like a flexible skill that not only does it get you out of trouble, you can use it to aggressively get into trouble as well. 300 health sounds small, but honestly, having to take that out could mean like two or three more shots out of their magazine, which, which could be the difference between the other player killing you or them you know getting away or you killing them you know that kind of thing cavalier just increases your maximum health by 600 it's very useful um if i could i would max out cavalier but i i can't fernando also does great with cards items like veteran so look forward to my item guide my item guide will be coming out tomorrow but cards like veteran uh, items like veteran kill to uh veteran life rip in fact, actually, Veteran and Rejuvenate benefit him the most. He doesn't really benefit off Life Rip or Kill to Heal that much. Um, for Fernando, it's very efficient to go with Veteran, Rejuvenate, Haven, Guardian. This is his ideal loadout, but if he can manage it in future, Morale Boost is great so that you can trigger your ult more. Kronos is a great alternative as well if, you want, if you're reliant on your Fireballs your, and you want to cool down your charge and stuff faster. Um, it will not benefit your shield, though. So in general, Fernando is very, very simple. He, because he, he just functions off Veteran Rejuvenate, and then you basically just want to stack your counter cards. Like, you want to counter them with Resilience. I'll go through that more in the item guide. 
So Fernando is your ideal basic tank, okay? Grand. Now let me put the uh, cam back on. Shit, I spent way longer on that than I thought. Healers, okay. For your basic healer, Ying is the premium choice. Why? Let me explain. Ying, he, Ying does very high damage with her mirror. So that's her basic attack. Her mirror is amazeballs. She also heals passively with her illusions. You can keep creating an illusion that will heal for allies for 400 every 1.6 seconds. This is very useful. And by utilizing a proper talent base, you can use Ying to keep dropping illusions, healing your allies in weird ways. And on top of that, all her talents are viable. Life exchange is great when you're the solo healer and um, it will instantly heal your target for 700 and it won't cause your illusions to explode. So this can be a very useful thing. Um, Illusory Mirror is also very good. Dimensional Link is used to get you out of trouble and her ultimate, now Ying's best healing comes from her ultimate, which basically will restore 600 health to every one second to all allies for eight seconds. When it's active, you can teleport to any ally with Dimensional Link. This can be used right out of spawn to teleport you straight to the fight while healing your allies right from spawn. Okay, that's why Ying is so good, and she's a great healer to learn. Now, for her builds and loadouts, um, sorry, I have two loadouts for her, and I'm actually going to explain both of them. Um, now, this is going to sound a bit strange, but I do not have a loadout for life exchange. Why? Because the default loadout for life exchange is generally good. You, the default loadout for life exchange is all you will need for life exchange. It's very, very good. At most, at most, you can, um, you can uh, take out squadron and put on carry on, but I find that it's unnecessary because you, you can have max two clones out. So you're not going to be able to have more clones just by having your illusions last longer. Rather, it's keeping them hard to kill is better. That's why I like life exchange for the default, if you're going with that talent. If you're going with focusing lens, this is my loadout for focusing lens. It is very, very good. Squadron will increase the health of the illusions by 200. Carry on will increase their duration by 3 seconds. Now, if you don't like this, you can actually go this way. Same as the focusing lens, but it's up to you. This one's your choice. Spring Bloom is good because if an illusion dies to an enemy, it cools down faster. Now, this one... Um, I'm actually going to reduce to 3, um, and the reason is because it just doesn't help you as much. And the last but not least is actually, um, where is it? Mm, I have to change this card because it was a bit annoying. If I'm not wrong, I think it's this card that I'm, that I'm planning on using. Disappear is very good because... When you're out of combat, having increased movement speed can help you reposition a lot faster. This can be very, very helpful. Also, in case, what if somebody knocks you off your horse? During that time that you're knocked down, you're, you're a bit slow, but as soon as you get out of combat, you can reposition faster. If you don't like this, if you don't like this, get Ephemeral. This benefits your focusing lens a lot. Why? You can shoot faster and reload faster. Up to you, genuinely. All right, but Focusing Lens is, the, is a damage talent. It's used when there's another healer around. So either Ephemeral or Disappear, up to you. Um, my personal choice would be Ephemeral. Previously, I had a throwaway card there, but um, due to the slight changes in the build um, from recent events, this is a better choice, okay? There you go. Um, for your Resonance build, this one I do not recommend using. It's more for experienced players, and I'll go through that in a separate Ying video, all right? Life Exchange or Focusing Lens, these two should be your primary talents, okay? Grand. We move on. Man, I, I wanted to do this video in 10 minutes, but I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, for the damage dealers, Victor, Victor, Victor is your primary choice. Why? He plays like a COD character. He's got an assault rifle, you can aim down sights, you can press F, which is your movement key, to move faster. And he throws frag grenades. He's a COD player. And you can call down a barrage, which is basically your your uh, bombing kill streak. It's so useful. Now, for him, two ways. Cardio is what you play when you don't have any other choice. But the only viable talents for him are shrapnel and burst mode. The talent you choose is going to be based on your playstyle. 
Some people prefer burst mode. Burst mode is my favored style. Why? I'll show you. For burst mode, Victor, flak jacket is only two. But it's genuinely up to you how you want to roll this because some people prefer it like this, XL Mag 2, flak jacket, maximum, uh, increase maximum health by 200. This is the original style. XL Mag then becomes your throwaway card. Um, Predator is set at five because you are highly reliant on your lifesteal in order to duel other characters. You only gain this while using your iron sights though. Please keep that in mind. If you get life rip, your total life steal is 55% when aiming down sights. This is very useful. And the victors that play in this way play as if they're backline characters. They play almost like snipers. Firing stance will just help you move around a bit more while you're using your iron sights and compensator will reduce your weapon recoil by 80%. You don't need to go all the way to 100 because it's overkill. 80% is enough and it turns your uh, aim down sights into a laser basically. There's almost zero recoil. You will barely even feel it. And because of that, 80% is enough which allows you to put extra points into Predator. Now if some people are not satisfied with this, they go Predator 20 and they put 100% um, into recoil compensation. It's genuinely up to you which style you want to play, okay? It's it's entirely your choice. Some people will even prefer it like this, giving yourself additional movement speed while using iron sights to reposition faster, chase enemies faster, up to you. All right, but me, if I was to swap off Predator, I would take Compensator instead to give me 100% recoil reduction, basically a beam. Very, very useful, okay? For the shrapnel build, this one is when you want to toss grenades. Okay, Grenadier will reduce the cooldown of Frag Grenade by 4%. Now, this is a build actually given to me in my chat. Okay, so um, I want to give credit where credit's due, but I can't remember the person who gave it to me, so I'm so sorry about that. Um, but if it, if it was you, please say so in the comments, and I'll pin your comments so that we can show proper love. This build was given to me by another person, and it works really well. I'm, I've modified it slightly, but only slightly because it suits my purposes better. Grenadier, reduce the cooldown of frag grenade by 4 seconds for every enemy hit by it. This allows you to throw 2 grenades in quick, in quick succession. All right, And it has a cooldown of 5 seconds, so your second grenade toss will not be cooled down fast. Previously, this didn't have a cooldown. You could toss grenades endlessly, but now it does, so you know you got to be careful with that. Hot Potato will reduce the cook time of frag grenade by 20%, basically enabling you to cook your grenade by holding it. And uh, eventually, getting good with throwing your grenades at Victor is very important. So this is this is very good for you. Guerrilla Warfare. Reduce the cooldown of Frag Grenade by 0.4 seconds every 1 second while Hustle is active. This can be very useful for getting your grenade back outside of your Grenadier, and also while you're repositioning and getting to a different location. Hit and Run. Now, Hit and Run, I'm a little bit iffy on. Why? Because after you get an Elimination or Killing Blow, you do get 15% more movement speed, but depends on how you want to use it. Some people use it to play a more aggressive victor, like running in and out of combat. If you find that this is not very useful for you, go straight for the compensator again, 200. Or you can go to get Grenadier to 5, but I think that's overkill, honestly. Um, so yeah, it, it, it really does depend on you, uh, how you want to reposition. If you don't find 5% useful, um, I would just go with compensator 100, 100 something like that. And this, this can generally work well for you. All right, so this is what I like about uh, Victor. He is a very, very strong character and one of the best damages to start out with, okay? Um, and you have two beautiful builds for him to use right off the bat, okay? And you can build those straight up, so you, know, you don't need to worry. Last but not least, we're gonna cover the flanker roll. Many of you who've seen my streams will know that I always give this advice, but the flanker is the ace of the team. Why do they have to be the ace? Because the flanker generally has to deal the killing blow. If a flanker cannot get a kill before they die, they have failed in their role. And that is why if you pick flank, you must kill an enemy before you die. That is the rule that I set on my teams for all flankers. I always tell them, if you want to do this, you need to kill somebody before you die. Okay. Who are the best flankers to start out with? Personally, um, out of all of them that I've played, and I love all flankers, um, Androxus is a bit harder to use than Lex. So Lex gets my vote as the starting fl uh, flanker, this guy. Lex. All right, but I very much prefer the Yasmin skin. Okay, why? Here, here's what's good about Lex. Number one, he has something called Retribution. Retribution will reveal a target 
through walls when, when they're within 120 units. Killing your retribution target grants you 30 credits and 15 additional credits for each kill in your target's current kill streak. This means, and you get half credits for an elimination on your target that is not a killing blow. So even if somebody else kills your target, you're still getting bonus credits. This allows Lex to build his items very fast. All right, the law. The law is his ultimate and it is so good. Basically, you can execute enemies at or below 65% health. All right, it deals 600 damage to enemies above 65% health, has a range of 120 units, and it destroys shields and executes enemies, okay, at or below 65% health. So just use it freely. He's very good with that. Magnums, okay. You can, they're automatic magnums, so you can just hold the left click button and bang, 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 bang. They deal massive damage. They've got an ammo count of 12, and they're fully effective up to 60 units. That's pretty good. In Pursuit, you will rapidly fire your magnums at the nearest enemy with perfect aim, so it's auto-aim, and deals 960 damage over 1.4 seconds. It acts, each one acts as a weapon shot, all right? And they're effective up to 200 units, so you can lifesteal with Pursuit as well, if you choose to go down that path. Um, Retribution? Retribution is, like I said, it will pick a target and you can see them through walls. Very useful. Combat Slide is its most important ability. You can slide forward and retain the ability to fire your weapons while sliding. All right, that's what's crazy. Now, why is Lex so good? His talent, Heroism, is the general general talent that's chosen. Some people use Discovery when they want to be more aggressive, uh, but it only helps you against your Retribution target. Heroism gives you immunity to CC and reduces your damage taken by 90% while you're in your combat slide. You need this talent. Do use this talent, abuse this talent. It is so good. Now, for Lex, there are a lot of weird, weird-ass builds for him. Um, currently, I very much prefer this talent, but what I'm going to do is I'm also going to adjust this a little bit. Why? Conditioned. 15% movement speed right off the back's back makes Lex a serious threat. All right? Commencement is also very useful for increasing the distance traveled by combat slide. Now, me personally, if you want to, I would... Um, reduce this keen sight because I'm going to change that anyway. I would have conditioned max. This is a must. Warrants out will increase your movement speed by 30% for two seconds after combat slide ends, giving you even higher bursts of speed. Um, commencement will increase the distance traveled by combat slide. If you don't like this, you can actually use warrants out for 40% movement speed after combat slide ends to juke around enemies. Um, it's really up to you. You have to choose it for yourself. Um, inescapable will increase your movement speed by 15% when you are within 60 units of your retribution target. This helps tremendously, but you can actually drop this down to 10. All right. It just gives you a little bit of an edge when you're near your retribution target. Now, here's the thing. Keen Sight is going to get replaced. Why? Okay, I'm going to explain why. Um, combat Slide can be very helpful, but running out of ammo is a serious problem for Lex. Re-equip can solve that issue for you which is why inescapable is not always necessary. In fact, you want to drop inescapable completely, you can. You can absolutely do that, and you can go for either um, Wicked Dome Rest to give yourself better combat slide, like that, or you can go for Juke Boots to, get, to give yourself 100 more health. Honestly, for Lex, I don't really um, think too hard about it because you're not retribution-focused. Some people like to have that extra 5% lifesteal, some people like to have additional, um, like, a sale here. But with Lex, right, one of the things that I often do is I'll buy Kill to Heal and Life Rip. I usually won't use Nimble because if you're running, if you're running Heroism, you've got so much mobility inside inside his build that you can, that you can run with. Um, and by having additional ammo cards inside it, while you already have maxed out movement speed abilities, you can basically never run out of ammo while pursuing your target, and you always be in a positive situation to kill them. Usually I fail to kill targets only because I ran out of ammo, so this can be another way. But for your pursuit card, because these cards are both like two points each, all right, and re-equip, here's the thing, it has a five second cooldown, which is why Wicked Don't Rest may not always help you. So sometimes having the additional ammo in pursuit is good, but if you wanna change that around, you wanna alter that, right? Um, you can actually go for hardiness because 12% damage reduction while using pursuit can sometimes help you secure a kill. I leave this choice up to you. My personal pick, my personal pick would be hardiness. Why? 
The damage reduction during In Pursuit gives you the opportunity to cool down your combat slide again and you can re-equip again. So I would rather have like, after, sh after like uh, shooting the enemy, I would rather be able to re-equip and then use, heart use my Pursuit to knock them out and then um, fire at them again and then re-equip again. You see, that is the way that I'll play this. But if you, like I said, if you feel a sail is better so that you can fire again after pursuit, that's on you. Um, that's literally your choice. So go for whichever you feel is better. Um, okay. Talent wise, uh, sorry. Uh, in terms of the cooldown, in pursuit has a 15 second cooldown. So just be careful of that. Um, it is a fairly long cooldown. Taking Kronos will not be very helpful for Lex. Lex benefits off morale boost kill to heal and life rip can be a alternate if you want usually what i'll start out with is morale boost kill to heal or kill to heal and life life rip just depending on what i want to do life rip just benefits him a lot because he heals another 32 health per shot of his automatic magnums and they fire really fast so it can give you some additional hit points while you're ducking around them and um then you heal back off kill off kill to heal so um it's really about how you want to play lex personally Morale boost can be very useful because you can just law, 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 law constantly. And it's it's like Vora's alt, but at a distance, which is why Lex is generally the best starter character. Okay? So I hope that all that information helped you. Damn, this video went for double the time, 20 minutes. But this is the beginner's guide to paladins for every single role. I hope that this helps you guys. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you like my channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I know we're new to paladins, but we'll be breaking in uh, shortly. Thank you very much. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you want to support the channel, you want to keep it running, drop a tip, file a link in the description of the video, send super thanks on YouTube, or become a channel member and gain access to various perks. Here is also a thank you to our current supporters, our Throne of Honor, Jerry Fast, Prestige, Fran Schubert, Prestige, Stephen Martin, Prestige, Logan Schwartz, Prestige, Pinomies, Prestige, King, Prestige, Ditorious Venom, Prestige, The Forgotten, Prestige, Nate the Great, Prestige, and Zach NFG, Prestige. Thank you guys so much for being amazing. All right. And also our February's top support list, Bravo7910, Alien Frost 80, Zabu Zumaki, Kazmant, I'm a lovely girl, Zach NFG, Shroot, I'm a boxhead, Franch Schubert, Pinomies, Aaron Elrod, Julian, Julian Quarles, Nate the Great, Don't Mind Me, Johnny Nara, and Rune Eater. Thank you very much for being amazing. We'll see you all on the next one.